You're listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, broadcasting from WMNF Live on September 12, 2023. And now we turn to our next topic, which is higher education in Florida. A new survey says it might be in trouble and many professors are in danger of leaving and it's becoming more difficult to recruit professors because of new state laws. Our next guest who joins us now live by Zoom is Andrew Gothard, president of the United Faculty of Florida, the Union for University Professors. Welcome back to Tuesday Cafe, Andrew. Hey, Sean, thank you so much for having me. Thanks so much. And would you be able to turn on your video? Oh, yeah, sorry. Give oh, me great. one moment. Thanks. Thanks so much for our television viewers. Oh, I thought we were just on radio. Okay, give me one moment. <laughs> sure thing. So I want to welcome you back to Tuesday Cafe, Andrew, and maybe you can let our listeners know and viewers know, what is UFF? So um, can you hear me now? Sound great. Thanks. Okay. Yes. So UFF, we are the United Faculty of Florida, which is the higher education branch of the Florida Education Association. Um get that going. There we go. All right. You can see me now. Great. Uh, we're the higher education branch of the Florida Education Association. We represent um, 34 different chapters across the state, which includes um, all 12 public universities, 16 state and community colleges. We have four K-12 uh, lab school chapters connected to our universities, four Graduate Assistance United chapters, and a retired chapter. So we're, we're all over the place in Florida. We're a very active group, and we fight every day to protect the working and learning conditions of Florida's higher education community. All right. And we're learning about this multi-state faculty survey, and that uh, according to the way that you were letting us know about it, that it is showing harm to Florida higher education. So let us know who was polled and um, what they said. So we polled... Um, so I, just just for the Florida portion, now this covered multiple states across the, su the southern part of the, the U.S., um, but just for the Florida portion, we polled um, not just our own members, but members of the higher education community more broadly. So these are not just UFF members who responded. These are, you know, these are tenured professors. These are first year instructors, graduate assistants, everybody who works in the higher education community. And we ask them voluntarily, anonymously to respond and share uh, their feelings on what was going on at, in higher education, how the uh, attacks on tenure, the efforts to censor speech politically, to weaken contract protections, to make it more difficult to serve as a higher education faculty member in Florida, how all of these things were affecting their desire to remain in the state and their desire to remain employed in higher education. And I got to tell you, the results are horrific. I mean, they show exactly what we have been consistently warning the governor, the members of the Florida Board of Governors, the State Board of Education, the legislature. We've been telling them over and over again, if you start to strip away tenure protections, high quality faculty who could go into the private sector and make double what they make as professors will leave. They will go to private labs and they will take billions of dollars in research funding with them. And I mean, if we if we just look at the numbers out of the 642 who responded, oh, almost 300 said that they plan to seek employment in another state within the next year. Within the next year, almost half, um, 500, close to 550 said they would not encourage a graduate student or faculty colleague in another state to seek employment in Florida. Uh, over 200 said they were not even going to stay in academia long term because of the changes to tenure and contracts and restrictions on academic freedom. And get this, out of the 642, over 600 said that the political atmosphere around higher education in Florida was either bad or very bad. So what this shows is that we have a failure of leadership in our, uh, in our elected leaders in Florida, and we have got to right the ship before our higher education system goes under. That's the voice of Andrew Gothard, president of the United Faculty of Florida, the Union for University Professors. And we're talking about a poll of professors that shows that dissatisfaction with new Florida laws that impact higher education. Later on in the show, we're going to hear about Suicide Prevention Month. You're listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. And I'd like to hear what you think. We're broadcasting live on September 20th. You can email dj at wmnf.org or text 813-433-0885. You can also phone in at 813-239-9663. So we've talked about the Florida results, but this poll also included people in Texas, 
Georgia, and North Carolina. What was their reaction to when they were asked whether they would consider moving to Florida to work in higher education? Uh, they said, no way. Uh, they are not coming to Florida when they are looking for other jobs. And, you know, that, that, that says a couple of things. On the one hand, it says that high quality faculty who have already earned tenure um, at another institution and are looking for a better opportunity are not looking at Florida. So we're not going to draw those competitive faculty who are looking around the country and thinking about where can they take their expertise, where can they take their research dollars, where can they take all their innovations, they're not looking at Florida. But that also means that new graduate students who are newly minted PhDs, who are looking for a place to start their careers and build their families and contribute to their communities, they're not looking at Florida either. So when you, when you see all of the surrounding states that were polled that aren't coming to Florida, and you combine that with all the people that we polled in Florida who are planning to leave, I mean, the, the, the outlook is, is dire, to say the least. You, you mentioned that uh, it's because of the impact of political interference and changes to tenure on faculty morale and retention. That's one of the reasons why people don't want to work in Florida, whether they're already working here or whether they're, uh, they're com thinking about coming from another state. So what is the impact of that political interference and changes to tenure? Absolutely. So um, this spring, the Florida Board of Governors passed a regulation to create post-tenure review in the state of Florida. Now, what most people don't know, unless you've worked in the field, is that post-tenure review already existed, but it had been created in such a way that it could reward faculty who were doing their jobs effectively and ensure that we weren't using post-tenure review um, punitively, but that we were using it to ensure that people were continuing to produce um, high-quality research even after they earned tenure. And, you know, Florida... Over, over the last 20 years has become the number one higher education system in the country. So clearly that was working, right? But a, apparently it wasn't politically motivated enough. So the Board of Governors passed a post-tenure review regulation this spring that allows for a much more thorough and aggressive review of tenure. It allows for, even though it, it technically prohibits political cause as being one of the reasons that faculty can be um, reviewed and have their tenure revoked, it doesn't actually provide any teeth to enforce that. And in fact, it opens up all kinds of loopholes for ways that those considerations can be used, particularly to cull faculty from our institutions across the state who do not agree with the governor's perspective or teach subject area that the governor or, or his supporters in the legislature don't approve of. And so what that's doing is it's making faculty stand back and go, oh, so all of my research, everything we talk about in class, everything I have to do now, it, it's not judged by whether it's actually what's at the cutting edge of the field and what is provable by, by evidence. It's judged by whether politicians will like it. And if that's the, if that's the call that faculty have to make, they're, they're picking up stakes and heading out of the state. And I, I don't blame them. So we've, we've established that uh, that the climate here in Florida is maybe not favorable for professors, whether they're professors in Florida or in these other states that are potentially considering Florida. Where are professors looking to move from Florida to where? So they're looking at states that um, um, do still have protections for academic freedom and do still allow faculty and students to express their ideas as they see fit and not have their constitutional rights trampled on by you know, tyrants in political authority. So interestingly, North Carolina still emerged as one of the top states that faculty were seeking alternative um, employment opportunities. My sense is that because it's because it's still you know, within the Southeast region and has not quite yet fallen to the low depths that places like Florida have gone with, with poor policy making. Um, but also California, New York, and Massachusetts are on the list of places that people are wanting to go. And listen, it's not rocket science what it's going to take to keep people here. All you have to do is respect the constitutional rights of faculty and students to not just disagree with one another, but to disagree with the state, to disagree with politicians, to follow wherever the evidence leads them and not always be stepping back and thinking, oh, is Big Brother DeSantis going to fire me or fire my professor or end this lab? because we're expressing ideas or exploring subjects that are politically inconvenient for this moment in Florida history. 
Well, since you brought up Governor Ron DeSantis and because he's seen as kind of the architect of a lot of these higher education policies that have been passed in Florida over the last few years, let's hear from the governor. He spoke at the ALEC conference uh, last month, I think it was, about higher education and a range of other things. But here's a couple of minutes of of, um, how Governor DeSantis views the idea that some professors might be leaving some schools and um, he seems to be okay with it. But let's hear. Here's the, the governor speaking at ALEC. We are also reforming higher education in the state of Florida. At the end of the day, our public university systems exist to serve the people of our respective states. They are supported by taxpayers. They don't have the right to just do whatever they want, regardless of whether it's benefiting uh, the people who are funding them. You need universities to fulfill the traditional mission of a university, the pursuit of truth, academic rigor, preparing our students to be citizens of our republic. They are not meant to indoctrinate students in political ideology. That is not a good use of taxpayer funds. So we've laid down the marker on that. We've also now have in Florida, all tenured professors must undergo review every five years and can be let go for poor performance. And we just signed legislation that the legislature passed that we've uh, nixed this whole idea of DEI in our public universities. I don't know that it's constitutional after the Supreme Court's decision with respect to racial uh, discrimination and admissions, but it is discriminatory. It's ideological. And DEI, we say, you know, it, it stands for discrimination, exclusion, and indoctrination. And that has no place in our public universities. So we've stood up for that. And guess what's happened as we've done it? We've seen a flood of applications coming. You know, the media will say, oh, some of these professors are leaving like new college. Like, isn't that a bad? Is that a brain drain? Well, you know, if you're a professor in like, uh, you know, Marxist studies, that's not a loss for Florida if you're going on. Trust me, I'm I'm totally good with that. Well, that's the governor speaking last month at an ALEC conference in Florida. And uh, we'll get to New College shortly. There's a lot to talk about there. But let's go through a few of the things that the governor said there with our guest, Andrew Gothard, president of United Faculty of Florida. UFF is the union for university professors here in the state. And he said that professor, before him, before his changes, the professors were indoctrinating students. Yeah, he's, he said that quite a lot. And I will point out, he has yet to provide a single example of a student who has been so-called indoctrinated by a professor. Um, as a higher education professor myself, I can tell you that students of today are not shy about speaking up and letting you know if they disagree with something that you have to say. Um, and in addition, you know, there are so many checks and balances with the way faculty teach, with the way, I mean, faculty are some of the most evaluated public employees in the world, right? We're evaluated for every course we teach by our, by our supervisors and by our students. We're evaluated on a yearly basis by our supervisors. Many of us have like multi-year evaluations and promotions that we go up for. I mean, there are people who are checking our, you know, we turn in our syllabi to our departments every every semester to make sure that they, you know, are clear and are meeting the requirements of the institution for accreditation standards. If indoctrination was happening in a single class somewhere, it would absolutely be caught and remedied. You know, th- this that indoctrination claim is part of the governor's ongoing attempt to smear higher education faculty with absolutely zero evidence to prove what he's talking about. The governor mentioned post-tenure review, which we talked about earlier. You said that that there's a lot of review for for tenure professors. And he also mentioned he he was bragging that under his leadership, they have nixed DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion measures at universities. That may sound like it's not, it doesn't impact academics necessarily. It may sound benign, but what are the real life impacts of canceling DEI programs at universities? So canceling DEI programs for Governor DeSantis is all about his him continuing his war on people of color in the state. Let's be absolutely clear. Right. From the attempt uh, to and and I guess the successful attempt to remove majority black voting districts in the state to lessen the voting power of people of color uh, across Florida, the, the desire to remove DEI programs is is all in that vein, because let me tell you what. 
there, there's a lot of like political propaganda that goes around about what diversity, equity, and inclusion programs do. Let me be very clear that the vast majority of diversity, equity, and inclusion programs, they help students from underserved communities get access to higher education and finish their degrees, right? Folks who maybe didn't go to the best high school or, or don't have families with a lot of money who can help support them through a four-year degree, or maybe have difficulty just getting to school, right? DEI programs help with that. They help first-generation college students. They help students from different um, religious backgrounds. They DEI is all about opening up access to higher education. And anytime you're trying to eliminate programs that expand access, what you're really trying to do is keep people out that you don't like. And I think Governor DeSantis, through his policymaking and his public statements and his refusal to denounce white supremacy in the state, has made very clear who he likes and who he dislikes in the state of Florida. That's Andrew Gothard, president of United Faculty of Florida, the Union of Prof University Professors. And we're talking about a poll of professors that shows dissatisfaction with new Florida laws that are impacting higher education. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. We're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. And uh, the DeSantis was kind of joking that professors of Marxist studies were leaving campuses. And uh, he thought, you know, that wouldn't he said that would not be a loss. But there are those. Uh, it's not just professors of Marxist studies that are leaving. There are STEM professors that are leaving Florida, and so on, as your as your poll has found. Yes, absolutely. And I just want to clarify. I don't. I don't actually know what a professor of Marxist studies would be. Um, you know, we definitely have professors in business who teach, you know, capitalism and, you know, the different forms of economic systems that exist. We certainly have we certainly have philosophers who explore like, you know, economic theory and labor. But there's not there's there aren't professors just sitting around like opining about the joys of Marxism. That's not that's not how higher education works. But also, you're absolutely right that, you know, this is across the spectrum of individuals who are planning to leave the state. This is not focused just in the humanities. This is not just focused in areas that the governor clearly finds, you know, politically problematic, which, by the way, the governor saying that he wants individuals who study Marxism to leave the state is absolutely viewpoint discrimination under the Constitution. I, I just want to be clear. It's inappropriate for the, gov for the governor or the government to choose what free, to free citizens get to learn and think and talk about. But outside of that, we are absolutely seeing faculty in every field and every discipline planning to leave. Um, and, and the attack on tenure and the demonization of faculty and the reduction of morale because of the statements that you just heard from Governor DeSantis that are just absolute fabrications about what happens in higher education are the cause for all of these ills. Now might be a good time to talk specifically about one uh, higher education institution that's changed a lot in the last nine months or so, and that's New College of Florida. In fact, Bubba writes in, thanks for bringing Andrew on your show today. What is his take on the grifters like Richard Corcoran and Chris Rufo, who led the conservative takeover at New College of Florida, and Bubba calls it shameful? Yeah, well, let's be clear. You know, anytime you're listening to Christopher Rufo talk about higher education policy, you're listening to someone who has zero experience in higher education, right? That these are the these are the brilliant experts that Governor DeSantis and his supporters are appointing to help supposedly reshape higher ed. I mean, we might as well have just thrown a rock into a crowd and picked out someone at random because they would have had equally as much experience in higher education policy as Christopher Rufo. So I encourage everyone, when you hear his wild ideas, recognize you're listening to someone who doesn't know what they're talking about. Now, for the rest of them, I mean, what we saw was absolutely a political takeover. These were far right political extremists, many of which who did not even live in the state of Florida, had no connection to the community or to the institution who are making very, you know, unquestionably wild decisions about how faculty and students should be treated. And let's actually look at the results. Faculty are fleeing. Um, students are being driven out of their dorms for major investments in sports, which actually don't have, you know, the, the, the college doesn't, or the new college, which is actually a university, doesn't have the space to actually, you know, use these athletes in any way. And let me tell you, if you're talking about ways to improve a higher education institution and the best ideas you can come up with are canceling programs, firing faculty, and dumping money into sports, you don't actually have any ideas. 
right? We could have asked chat GPT how to improve new college and come up with more substantive answers than we have seen from Richard Corcoran, Christopher Rufo, and that horrific board of trustees that is driving that institution into the ground like a railroad spike. We also have, as you mentioned, there's been a lot of faculty turnover and but but in according to the governor, the governor is, was really happy that there's he in his words, there's been a flood of applications. Um, but that has actually led to the the school having to house students in hotels and so forth. So um isn't isn't it a good thing though, to get a lot of applications? I have not seen any evidence that uh, that there has been a flood of applications. Uh, as with as pretty consistently with higher education policy, the governor has a very complicated relationship with the truth. So uh, until I actually see any evidence that there's been a flood of applications, I am going to stick with what I what I know and what I have seen, which is that applications are down and that students very much do not want to go to new college. And the most of the students we're hearing from are students who have been baited into going there with athletic scholarships that unfortunately do not seem as though they're going to pan out. Our guest is Andrew Gothard, president of United Faculty of Florida, the Union for Pro University Professors. And we've got a call. So let's hear what Don in Tampa has to say. Hi, Don, you're on the air. What would you like to say? Hi, uh, new college graduate here. Uh, I want to ask the professor uh, uh, to speak to how Republican identity politics are going to distract from the loss of the abortion issue as a base globalizer. All right. Thank you, Don, for that. And Andrew, um, did you understand the question? Not not fully. What was the? Try one more time, Don. These type of identity politics that distract from the loss of the the abortion issue, which they won as a base globalizer. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I th so absolutely. You know, are are there issues and are there things that we could actually do in higher education to improve the quality of education that students receive and improve the working conditions of faculty and staff in our colleges and universities? Absolutely. But just like we're seeing broadly across Florida and, quite frankly, American politics right now, the, Re the Republican and Party and, and just sort of broad conservatives are focused on these um, these culture wars absolutely as a distraction from the real issues, right? The legislature can continue to argue about DEI and critical race theory and where it should exist and where it shouldn't exist and what role the government should play in censoring ideas they don't agree with, but none of that is actually going to do anything to improve our higher education system. And as we've, saw, as we've seen with this survey, the more they argue about this and the more they demonize faculty with these sort of false gender manufactured crises, the more they're going to drive highly qualified professionals away from our higher education system. All right. Thank you for that call, Joe. And I should remind people that we are live on the 12th of September here on Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and our guest is Andrew Gothard, president of United Faculty of Florida. And we have uh, we have Joe in Lakeland on the air. Joe, you're on you're on the air. What would you like to say? Yeah, I think that another Joe here in Lakeland. Uh, yeah, my wife's an educator here in Polk County, longtime educator, comes from a family of educators. Mom taught 30 years, aunt taught 45 years. Uh, and there is a huge, she is now up to 32 students in her classroom, a huge uh, 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 evacuation of in teaching jobs at her school and many other schools. There's vacancies all over the place. And all this back to policies that tie in to what's going on at New College because it's the, 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 the DeSantis policy, as I, I like to say it, that caused her this thing, and because they're not paying teachers, he's decided with the uh, the raise, so that he called it, uh, went to new teachers where there are no new teachers because of his policy. So therefore, the teachers who are tenured or who have been there teaching for a long time aren't didn't hardly get any raise, and of course, then there's the administration who soaks up a lot of the raise as well. Um, so it's just really hurt Florida as a whole, again, back to his and colleges, with the whole Disney and tourism, it's just been a really bad deal all around. It's just, it's the choice that Florida made 
for this governor. And hopefully Joe, I'm going to let you go because I think you made your point. It's not just higher education, Andrew. Um, Joe is also pointing out that in Polk County's public schools, and I'm sure other public schools in the country, in the state, there are similar problems. Yeah, I mean, there, there's no question that education policy under Republican leadership for the last 20 years has dramatically harmed um, public education in Florida. I mean, as as the the speaker was was talking about the vast numbers of teacher vacancies, the difficulty that we're having, um, just getting teachers to actually get into the classroom anymore. Um, that has been building up over a long time in bad Florida uh, legislative policy making, and for a while. How, you know, the legislature kind of left higher ed alone, which is why higher ed was able to improve so much. But now they've decided we didn't have enough mailboxes to put our bad ideas in. Let's shift over here to higher ed and see if we can break that, too. And listen, this is what happens when you elect politicians who don't run on platforms that actually have substantive ideas. We have got to stop electing wrecking crews. We have to we have to elect the construction company. We have to elect people who know how to build good policy, who know how to sustain the best interests of Florida in the long term, and who are ready to create things. Because if we just keep supporting as a state folks who only want to tear things down, we're going to turn around one day and realize that we're living in rubble, and it's going to be our own fault. Well, we have one more call. I know uh, our time is running short before we get to our next segment. Again, we're going to talk about Suicide Prevention Month in just a minute or two. But maybe, Art, if you are able to make a very quick point, what would you like to say, Art? Hi, I was just wondering, uh, when DeSantis fired a president of the university and then hired one of his friends and increased the salary of that person about 300 k isn't that an overt corruption? Thank you for the question. Are in St. Pete, Andrew? Yeah, absolutely. I mean that I I appreciate the uh, the caller before who mentioned that what happened at New College was a grift. Absolutely. I mean pushing out the previous president and then hiring a president who has no higher education administrative experience, who's just a politically connected individual, and then doubling their salary. Um, that is that is absolutely a grift and is not something that should be happening with public dollars. And I will point out that for years, our organization fought legislation that was that wanted to take presidential searches for colleges and universities out of the sunshine laws, because we thought it was important that for institutions that have millions and sometimes billions of taxpayer dollars that go to how that institution runs, that the taxpayers should be able to see who are all the individuals who have applied for these jobs and why are we choosing one individual over another. But unfortunately, um, last year or two years ago, two sessions ago, the legislature decided, no, the public didn't need to know that. And immediately after that is where we saw an influx of politicians taking over our colleges and universities and not highly qualified academic professionals. Well, that's all the time we have for for this segment, but I do want to thank you very much for coming on back on Tuesday Cafe, Andrew. Thank you for having me, Sean. I'm happy to come back anytime. Well, I'm really glad you could join us. Andrew Gothard is president of the United Faculty of Florida, the Union for University Professors. We've been talking about a new survey of higher education faculty that shows dissatisfaction with state policies that are affecting colleges and universities. 